Her business. In her private life, there's been happiness and there's been sorrow, divorce and court cases, but she survived it all remarkably. She still packs out theatres whenever and wherever she gives a concert. And now she's back on the recording scene as well with this record. She is, of course, Dorothy Squires. Show business, well, I started in show business when I was uh, uh, actually I, I was singing to, to colliers at, at, at dawn when I was singing with my ukulele. <laughs> it was I've always wanted to be in show business, but I entered show business when I, I wasn't quite just after fifteen and a half. And uh, when you read my book and the things, I mean, when it eventually gets out, when you read of the situations uh, that that, uh, that we had to do, mind you, Chris. It's the only way to 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 uh, to become a star. They, there isn't any time today for 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 uh, anybody to become. I mean, youngsters to become stars. It's rather sad, actually, because uh, I remember very briefly and concise. I was playing. Uh, I I was. Uh, I had to work three shows a, a, a night, and I'd be getting, I'd be lucky if I'd earn nine pound a week, mm -hmm. you know, and I'd, I'd pay 12 and 6 for my room in Victoria. Anyway, I, I went on one, on one gig, what they call a gig, it was a child, children's matinee, and they, when I got there, they got the, <laughs> got the wrong times, and I was getting two pound ten for it. So they, it was the children's matinee, and it was a cowboy picture, so they had the nerve to stop the cowboy picture for me to sing. Well, I'm not kidding you, and the pianist was drunk. <laughs> so, <laughs> as I walked down the aisle, I said, boo, and an apple hit me on my lip, and my lips <laughs> were like, oh, and can you imagine the kids' matinee? And then I, I thought, I've got to sing my five songs, otherwise I wouldn't get my two by ten. And as this pianist, she was so drunk, she did a crescendo on the piano and fell on the floor. <laughs> and I had to sing the three songs on the company because they wouldn't have paid me otherwise. And three appearances a night, that kind of uh, scale of work in those days. And yet these days, Dorothy, we don't see very much of you. Your public appearances are very few and far between. Why is that? Well, it, first of all, uh, I have been involved in, in, in writing, a tremendous amount of writing. On top of which, I've got a show on Broadway. We've got a show, a very big musical about Charles II, Old Rowley, and I've been back and forth to the States. I am going to do war, obviously. And this record now will, and I, in fact, this I am what I am. 
is out of a very big Broadway show, and I'm very excited about it because I put it on out on my own that, label. That kind of <laughs> points up one of the things I wanted to put to you, Dorothy. That um, you know, you say it's never been easy when you've released a record. That there's the feeling when you put on live shows that you've got to do it your way. You are a bit of an outsider, aren't you? You do see yourself as, uh, to an extent, at war with the, the no, show no, that's established. No, no, quite wrong, no. Quite wrong, Chris. No, no, no. You see, if you... If, if some people are out of the establishment, and one can say there's a blacklist. There isn't. It's just one of those things. It, you know, uh, I mean, at one time, I can remember Cliff Richards telling me, he says, God, I can't get my records spread. I said, join the club, pal. You know, so you don't sit around and do it. You do something about it. And the first one that, uh, I mean, I, came, I owe a great deal to Wales. A, my wonderful parents, and I was born here. And uh, the, the wonderful friends, I mean, I, I've never known a day in a studio, and believe me, I, I, I really mean this, they've all been pretty wonderful. And uh, if I could name them by name, I'd be here all night. But uh, I, when I ceased being a housewife, which I enjoyed very much in Hollywood, I was able to study music and do the things I'd always wanted to do. And of course, when I came back, as, uh, you know, when, uh, when it was all over, I had to get back into show business. And um, uh, how to start when you've been away from it for so long uh, is very, very, very dodgy. And of course, I chose Wales. One night, I had done about three weeks down in this one all around the wonderful valley. And I always stay with my Aunt Martha. I'm going to see her tomorrow, actually. And um, uh, I played the, the Bayview uh, uh, Club in Port Albert. Uh, and um, uh, that night... Got some Port Talbot people. <laughs> and that night, I imagine the club held about uh, a thousand, but there must have been 16, 1700. And it was the most incredible uh, thing I'd ever heard. You couldn't hear a sound, because when you realize they're all drinking pints and the, the, the tills and one thing, there wasn't a sound. And I saw the sun coming down over the horizon, and I was doing my finale, singing my finale, and the audience... It, they were incredible. They really were. You could hear an absolute pin drop in a in a place like this, where you realise they're all passing pints, and there wasn't a move. And I was absolutely knocked out. You've hinted uh, at the problems uh, you've had in your life, uh, Dorothy. Do you have any regrets? If you, if you if you could have your time over again, would you do it any differently? No. I tell you why, Chris. You cannot reach the heights until you reach the depths. Dorothy, we thank you for joining us this evening. I wouldn't have missed it for all the money in the world. I really mean that. And it's been a fabulous, fabulous day. And Do thank you all very much. Dorothy Squires, ladies and gentlemen.